This short video is a basic tutorial on the operation of Prolase 7 software. The tutorial is intended to show the basic operation of Prolase 7. Prolase is a full featured laser marking software package and its full functionalities beyond the scope of this tutorial. Our intent is to provide a new Prolase user with basic instructions on how to create basic text objects and graphical images and prepare them for marking. Our version of Prolase is pre-configured for use with a Gemini Langolier fiber laser marker. Prolase is designed to work with any steered beam that is Galvo driven laser marking system and this tutorial makes the assumption that your copy of Prolase has been properly configured for whatever marker you're using. When Prolase open, opens, the screen displays an empty marking field. This is the size of the, this is the area that, in which you can place marks. The size of the marking field depends on what scan head you have on your system and what lens it's configured with. When you place objects into the screen, the size of the object that's going to be marked uh, doesn't have anything to do with how it appears on the screen. It has to do with its size relative to the marking field. To the right is the layout tree. Marking objects are placed into layers. If you don't see a layer icon on your layout tree, right-click the word Prolase, click New Layer, and one will appear. If you right-click the layer icon, click on new object, a little drop-down list appears and those are object types that can be marked within Prolase. The majority of marking can be accomplished by marking one of three types of objects, a graphical object, a fixed text object, and a variable text object. A graphical object is just as the name implies, it's a graphic. Prolase is not a graphical creation software package. Graphics have to be created in some other program and then imported into Prolase for marking. Graphics don't have to be created to size. Size and location of the marked graphic are controlled by Prolase. A fixed text object is a non-changing text object. It could be human or machine readable text. Barcode and 2D data matrix are examples of uh, machine readable text. Most human readable text is done with true type fonts. The only limitation to available true type fonts has to do with which fonts are installed on your particular computer. If you need a different font, just add it to your Windows fonts directory. A variable text object is one that changes. A serial number on a part is an example of a variable text object where the number wants to change from parts to part. Like fixed text object, variable text objects can be human readable or machine readable fonts. When an object type is selected in Prolase and placed into a laser layer, we have to define three things about it in order to mark it. Those three things are what are we going to mark, where are we going to mark it, and how are we going to mark it. Let's start Let's import a graphical image into a layer. If I right click on the word layer, new object, graphic, the object name selection box appears. This tells me I'm going to place a graphical object in layer one. For clarity, I can change the name of the object and that's how it will appear in the layer tree. If I click on OK, the graphics properties pages appear. The image page will be selected. The first thing I'll do is select the type of graphic and in this case I want to use old legacy importers. I'll select file. I'll browse to where my graphic files are. I'm going to use a file named afg.plt. It's one that we created for this demo and it's the outline only of a logo. I'll open that. While I'm still on the image page, I want to add fill to it. I mentioned that this logo was created as an outline only, but we want to burn it out solidly. So I've got to add fill to it. Fill will draw laser lines at 
some spacing that we defined in order to burn the logo out solidly. I'll select Outline and Fill. I'll go to Fill Settings. I'll choose a beam width of zero. Set a hatch spacing of two thousandths of an inch. I'll use one burn pattern on it and I'll have an, uh, my fill angle will be 90 degrees. If I then go to Orientation and Sizing, if I select X0 and Y0, X justification and Y justification at center, my logo is going to be centered about my marking field. I'll select Natural for the Aspect Mode. That will allow the, the logo to change proportionally in height and width as, th as the height changes. I'll select a height of one inch tall. Under laser control, I'm going to use a material file and I'll select pass one. The material file is inside the layout tree. It has seven predefined laser passes and I can select one or more of those to burn the object with. I'll simply use pass one. If I click on OK on my screen, the filled logo appears. If I wanted to add a text object, to my marking field, I could right click on layer, new object, fix text. I could change the name of my text as it will appear in, a, in, in the, the, the layout. That brings up the properties page for the object. Because I want to fill it, I'll select outline and fill. I'll use the same fill settings, beam with zero, hatch spacing, two thousandths of an inch. I'll change the text to what I want to mark. I'll get a little plug in here for our Gemini Langolier. I can also select the font that I want. In the font type, I can select several types. I'm going to use a true type font for this particular text. If I then click on the word font, it brings up the list of fonts that are in my Windows directory. I'll use an Arial font. A sample of the font is displayed in the sample box. Changing the size of the font changes the size inside the sample display that has nothing to do with the actual size that you're going to mark the logo. That's controlled by another field in Prolase. I then click on Orientation and Sizing. I can set my X and Y positions to zero, my justifications to center, aspect mode to natural, I'll leave my height at point 2. Let me go back and change my Y position to minus 1.5 so my text object isn't sitting on top of my logo. Now we have the logo and a text object in the same layer. The logo is centered but the text object is below it. I like to mark everything at the center of the marking field. It's just easier for me to set up and kind of place my part in the field. If I drag a box around the two objects, right click them, properties, and I can center about the origin. So all I did was take my marking objects, turn them into a group, and I centered that group in the, in the origin. What if you had a part, for example, and you wanted to mark this logo and the fixed text object on the front of the part, then you wanted to flip the part over and mark a serial number on it. Well, the marking would have to stop until you could relocate the part. If we right click on the word layer, put in a new layer. If we then right click on that, add a new object, and let's add a variable text object to this. Let's change the name to serial number. This brings us to the variable text properties page. <clears throat> We've already selected a serial number, the starting number, 
is 0, 0, 0, 1. We now have a serial number object in a different layer in the middle of the marking field. Now if we hit simulate, we're going to mark both objects in layer 1, the logo and the text. Then everything's going to pause. This would give us time to move our part, flip it over, put it into a different position to mark the serial number. Then if we hit the enter key again, it marks the serial number. Everything stops. We can replace the part with a new part. Mark again. Flip the part over. Mark the serial number and note that the serial number increments. The way the part marks is determined by the fill and the laser settings. Laser settings in this case are from the material file. If you right click on material, material property, you'll see <clears throat> we have seven predetermined sets of laser settings. And those can be those can be changed according to the system that you have. In our case, we've got power 20, speed 25 inches a second, and a pulse frequency of 5 kilohertz. The specific settings depend on your laser, how it's configured, and how it operates. Almost everything can be done with three types of objects. Uh, a graphic, a fixed text, <coughs> and a variable text. The steps for creating the marking objects are pretty much the same for all types of objects. Specifics such as size, location, and laser settings might be different, but it's the same repetitive steps each time. ProLays does some pretty amazing things, but these three types of objects will cover the majority of marking applications for most users. I hope this video was useful. If we can answer any specific questions about ProLays or Gemini laser marking systems, please feel free to contact us. Thank you for taking the time to watch this.